Hey, this is Margarita Monet from Edge of Paradise, and you're tuned into Side Jams with Brian Raisman. Hey everybody, it's Brian Reeson with Side Jams here today with well, singer, rhythm guitarist, gleeful, gleefully maniacal metal front woman, <laughs> Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm, uh, who is Hi, also everybody. a painter. <laughs> a, a, uh, yes, a newly reformed painter. Um, yeah, man, thank you so much for having me. This is, this is awesome. I, you're actually the, you're the first person that I get to talk about uh, my painting with because it's it's fa it's fairly new. It's been something in the back of my head for a while, and so I, yeah. I appreciate you talking to me about it. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, I it's I, I find it interesting because you you have I mean you love music and you're doing lots of music and we've talked we were talking about earlier for Billboard about the whole lockdown thing and how that it now with these paintings I I mean Ashley your publicist sent me like just seven total here. Were these yeah. done during uh Were these done during lockdown or were these done before? Uh, the, these were these ones uh, were actually done pretty recently. Um, I, like they're actually a little unfinished. I have some of them here because um, I have to, I get to glaze them, and it's like almost like trying to figure out is that the end goal or do I get crazier with it? You know, just keep, that's a newer I, one. I don't know if I've actually. I don't know if she has sent me that. That one's got. Things. Oh, here it is. So it's like a lot of a lot of these things have a dripping quality to them. Like there's they kind of. Uh, there's a sea of colors and something is kind of sort of oozing in. <laughs> it's, it's definitely um, a strange part of my psyche because uh, if you look in my closet, there's a lot of uh, black <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and I don't have a whole lot of color in my life, um, you know, versus this. But I, I just yeah. look when I when I first started getting into um doing art, you know, I, I kind of started with uh, sketching and um, just a lot of like abstract ways of, of doodling and doing these things. And yeah. it, I, I would stop and start off of it because I hadn't quite found my, my medium and the place that I don't, the, uh, that feels like home to me, like feels like that it can actually do something. So when I got into, um, acrylic painting, yeah. Um, I'll end up doing the, uh, uh, you know, layers of color and I'm using, I'm not necessarily using a, a, a paintbrush. I'm using some, uh, scraper tools in order to spread things around and, and make little indentations and okay. a lot of texture. And then I will, um, layer over that with, uh, with acrylic pour over paint, which is so much fun. And it's so <laughs> messy. Um, it just, I don't know. It, I, I almost feel like, I am this little kid, you know, again, in like first grade, just like discovering different colors and how to combine things and yeah. what, 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 what can be a little bit more radical. So it's been kind of that, this weird extension of, I guess I have this colorful side that I need to get out in some way. And, uh, and so just started doing it and got a bunch of drop cloths and, and um, I've messed up a, a bunch of, old Levi's because now they've, they've been dubbed my painting jeans. <laughs> there we go. That's your new fashion and, uh, statement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> going to be splatter paint everywhere. So yeah, do you want, can you, can you pull out that painting oh, yeah. again? You can show it right to the camera. Absolutely. Oh, there we go. Awesome. So there's that. Yeah. Guy. So that's, I mean, that's, that's interesting. It sort of has these waves that are going horizontally, some vertical, yes. a lot of, a lot of like very, darker purple red bl blue and then like lighter colors kind of dripping down and then this little black yeah. border and what what when you create something like that what are you thinking um honestly i'm putting on music most times and just kind of going with that and almost trying to create um a visual uh like for for uh, this <laughs> one was actually what was on um i put on some uh, you know some some you know, eighties hair metal stuff going on. And I, I believe this one <laughs> was this, I think this was winger. <laughs> okay. Pretty sure. Um, but you know, there's it, just a, an eclectic mixture of, um, uh, you know, of different things that I enjoy listening to. There was some Dio, some priest in there. Um, but I don't know, for me, it's a lot of flying by the seat of my pants because sometimes, uh, and I'll, I'll show you one of these. Sometimes, yeah, there's like seven that I have total that she sent me. Oh, goodness. Um, sometimes there are some happy accidents 
which ended up happening with uh, with this guy, which I don't know. It de it depends on the eye of the beholder. I we could do it this way. <laughs> sometimes sometimes I feel like having the drips down. It's not. It's like oh, of course everything drips down. But um, but yeah. I ended up not necessarily wanting to use so much black, but I wanted to have kind of this almost teal color kind of coming down with it. So you almost have to layer the teal first. And then I poured the black yeah. and then just kind of created some indentation here. It's, it's just almost like it's an, a lot of fun. Though. It's like an, almost you like an, a sort of invading, I guess I'm a horror and sci-fi fan, but it's almost like this presence is kind of invading the frame. Did you yeah. think about that? It's very, it's very stranger things right now. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, but, yeah, that, that's yeah, a more black and red kind of canvas with a lot of, it's like a lot of trails too across the... A lot of the... trails. And I, I just love how, how the, when you're kind of drip painting and kind of moving things around, there's a lot of motion. And then certain things in the background will bleed through. Like I have this guy, that's probably the more colorful one. Oh yeah. And, so this one has got more like one, an orange, orange, yeah, pinks and yellows. Got some, got some neon stuff going on there. And then there's always there's always some weird spooky thing like I don't know what is this guy a little devil I don't really know, you know. It's but like it's a like devilish little... figure that's with these two arms outstretched, kind of penetrating the black. And there's also that black thing. You seem to have a lot of this black ooze, <laughs> like this thing on the side of a lot of the paintings that's kind of entering. That that's your black. Yeah, that's my black. And it's it that's interesting that you notice that because that's something that um, my bandmates told me when they they were I kind of had them out drying and they were looking at them and they're like you know there is i mean as for as colorful as you you're making all of these uh yeah, yeah. i uh <laughs> i like there's still that darkness to that so it's it's interesting to see the type of uh, the the different parts of maybe your personality that will come through without you trying yeah and that's what i kind of that's what i kind of here's another one with some black in it um but now that's I, interesting because you've got like those are actually you could hold that up yeah. again yeah so there's like there's, you have all these sort of blue, because I'm for the audio version of the podcast anyway, like there's a lot of blue and white dripping down. And then again, there's that black presence kind of, kind of seeping in. Yeah, never, never really goes away. Yeah, but, but it's, but it's interesting to, to play with that dark and light. And, and I'm sure that's an extension of, um, you know, of, of my, my other creative outlets. But what I love the most about painting right now is that I'm not doing it for anything. Um, kind of like in the same way that I wasn't really doing music for anybody or anything but myself early on. And then, yeah. you know, a, you know, after years, the music then becomes, oh, well, that's an extension of your career. And, and now there's, you have a lot of people, you know, working for you that depend on this to happen. And so I'm not saying that music becomes like work sometimes uh it, there is an element to that um i of course it does i though. try not yeah you know, it's, like, it's, it's like, like writing for me there's just there's some drudgery yeah. that you have to go through there, there is some work there's some some like okay this is the uh this is the you know the professional whereas the great thing about discovering some other outlet um whether and there's a couple of things in my life you know i love to cook i also love to fish and it's all and with with the painting it's all very meditative and there's this this escape that you have when you're doing it. And it's just this kind of pure joy. And then all of a sudden, like three or four hours go by and we're like, whoa, <laughs> just time traveled through, through making a mess with, with paints. So what else do I got? Oh, here's a strange one. This one, I decided to be a little bit more minim minimalist. All right, that's so the right way to look at this. This is like a, a dark blue. There's blue, dark blue, purple, and you have this white line, this like almost like a lightning bolt, just kind of slicing yeah. from the top right to the lower left. That's the proper. That's the proper way to look at it. I want to make sure I get that. That's, that's where it is in my head right now. But it's so funny because I keep putting them down and trying to figure out because really, I mean that that could work as well. It just yeah. it depends on the eye of the beholder. So like really, I mean the next step for me, like I have to. I have to glaze a lot of these just so that there's uh it'll make the color pop a little bit more. And then, uh, and, they survive. and then I'm going to try to get them properly framed and then try to figure <laughs> out what, what I'm going to do about it. But, um, but I, yeah, it's like everything. I kind of leave a lot of things up to chance. Uh -huh. Um, I like to do that with, with like free form doodling too, where it's almost like you're, you throw yourself headfirst into the maze mm -hmm. and then almost kind of, decides to reveal whatever it's going to be. And sometimes, you know, sometimes 
you feel like, oh, did I take that too far? You know, like maybe, maybe, you know, like my last step before, before the, the final, the final form is where it's at. And then some, and then sometimes those, again, those happy accidents, those yeah. little things that bleed through that you want to accentuate, you know, and you want to be like, well, that's, that's the point. That was the, that was the reason for me doing that. So, yeah. Well, now what was the last one called? Oh, the, <laughs> this the one. line one. Yes. Um, the line one. Um, I was calling it the eye of the storm, but I feel like because I'm in hailstorm, that's a little cheesy. So I've yet to name a lot of these. I, I really, what I should do is, uh, um, is sit down again with, uh, with, with some music and try to come up with some proper titles <laughs> for, for everything. Like I said, I'm, I'm really new to this. I'm, I, uh, like I said, when I, when I found that, that medium, and then also mm -hmm. again, not using the brushes, using the scraping techniques and the, and the pouring over techniques, um, I feel like I kind of finally found my place in it where I can expand and there's like really no, there's no rules and I'm not, I'm not even sure what I'm looking for. Um, but I'm going, I, I'm going to continue to do it. I've gotten a couple, um, and, and I, it's funny cause I've gotten a couple people that are like, Oh, like, can, can, can you frame that and, and send, you know, can I get that from you? And I'm like, I, yeah, I mean, I totally can, but like, I'm not doing it for, for anyone else but myself right now. And, and, uh, maybe at some point in time there can be, uh, uh, some, some charity involved or, or do some, do some good with some art, um, with it, but. Yeah. It's, well, there's this one here, which is your, it's like, it looks like it's a, oh, just yeah. a, a whole bunch of dripping colors, but you know, it could almost be like you're in a jungle with vines. Yes. Is that this one? Yeah. That's this guy. Yeah. My colors are probably almost. slightly different it's on my kind phone. Of, it's almost like a, like this, you know, with these bars that you're behind, almost a little prison-esque and it felt, it felt like almost this vantage point you know where you have this like view to the outside right whereas right. maybe that's a landscape yeah. in the back and and but you know there's no real way to get there um so yeah it's it's interesting and so so at first i was doing it like this and then as soon as yeah, i flipped it, it almost it almost looks like there's some some type of water or some type of reflection or maybe that's a sunset. I'm not sure. It's like you know every <laughs> time every time I look at them I see something else, and that's what I that's what I love about it as well is like it's never really the like this like whatever you started out with as yeah. the concept. It's like it's almost like the the piece of art goes nope that's not what I want right now. <laughs> this so is you, what I am. I'm revealing myself to you. So do you see it almost like you're turning? It's like you're almost turning your brain off, and not in a bad way, but you're just kind of going. You're going through these motions, but you're just doing whatever is being dictated by what's happening at that moment, and then you suddenly go, oh wait a minute. It's that that is absolutely um, how I do it, and and I I've, I've found so much. Um, peace with that too because i have a very hard time uh shutting things off uh you know i'm i'm definitely a serial insomniac and and so to to try to find those things where you feel you still feel like you're accomplishing something and you still feel like you're doing something and and immersing yourself in something creative but when you're able to shut that part of you off and that you shut your brain off you're not thinking about anything but what's right in front of you. And, and it's almost like, you know, uh, unveiling this mystery, you know, trying to follow the story and, ch and literally just chasing whatever gets you excited. Um, which is where my mind goes when I, you know, when I'm just writing for writing's sake and writing a song. Um, so the right. fact that I'm able to do that now with something else, um, and I, I could say the same thing about fishing, because um, the only thing you're thinking about is, is you know, when are you going to reel in that hook? <laughs> how long, but, how long uh, have you been fishing for, by the way? Um, I've been fishing since I was a kid. Uh, it, it had been a couple years since I had lived uh, next to a lake, and um, and right huh. now I'm in I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, you know, right off of a lake, and so really kind of immersed myself into that when uh, when I moved here and got back into it and. Um, it's kind of nostalgic for me because we would do that when we were camping as kids, like with my dad and all that. So, um, it's kind of nice to be in that place too. And now, you know, right now, especially since it's summer, um, I end up going out on my back porch with a couple of, uh, drop cloths and all of my paint supplies and my, 
my old Levi's that are completely covered in paint because I that's how I clean my my blades now. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just it'll be your new. There'll be your new enough. jeans line. Just the purpose. I mean, if exactly. they could sell distressed the jeans, they might as well just sell those, right? Every, you could you could paint you could paint them. <laughs> you could actually paint a everything design. That would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would that would be cool. I I've done that before, um, and uh, especially you know when uh, I don't know when you get to a certain point, where you're like ah. These these are these are tired. These need to be you know evolved and and uh, so you just get out the paintbrushes. But uh, at, it's uh, it's funny because now when I paint, I'm literally it's 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 kind of like fishing because I'm out and looking at the lake, and so I'm being inspired by all the sounds happening there too, and yeah. the the birds and that you can kind of you know with in the wind and everything. And so it's just it's it's a uh, it's it's nice to be able to kind of connect with nature too while you're doing it because it's almost like these things become a little bit more primal um so have you yeah, painted nature i haven't um well i i haven't in a while i used to be obsessed with uh trees and so i would do kind of like tree landscapes or just or certain parts of yeah. the tree like instead of doing the entire picture just like picking yeah. certain almost like frames out of the branches and trying to, you know, mimic that in a way. Um, I may get back into that with the, with the acrylic paints. Um, you know, right now I'm in this phase where I'm very much into the, the beautiful chaos <laughs> that comes along with it. So at some, at some point in time, I'll, I'll, you know, be inspired by a little bit more of that structure, but. So it's acrylic right now, paint. Wee. Oh, sorry. What? For right now, we, <laughs> I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the roller coaster ride. So you have acrylic paints and canvas, right? Mm -hmm. Acrylic paints and canvas. Um, and like you said, sometimes I, I use the jeans uh, <laughs> and we're painting on clothing, um, which is always interesting. You know, I've, I've, uh, I've given some of those pieces to some friends and, you know, they're, they're like, this is great. This is like, I don't have to go to like some boutique place where like you spend $300 on a pair of jeans. I can just get Lizzie to paint on them. Um, so <laughs> I'm getting requests, but um uh, but yeah, so uh, acrylic on canvas and, uh, and then, um, I ended, and for my, my tools of choice, um, are either literally making a mess either with my hands or by kind of tipping the canvas as, you know, with, yeah. with the pour over paints, um, and that, and, but using all of my layering techniques or the kind of cutting out and doing the textures, um, just with, uh, you know, I have a set of blades, a set of, uh, scraping blades that I use, um, only because I don't know. And again, there's no like reasoning behind, behind it other than that just felt right. You know, it felt good. And, uh, and I guess that's all you can ask for when you're immersing yourself in, 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 uh, in, into art is, uh, finding your happy place and finding what, what feels like an extension of you. So when it doesn't feel foreign, um, yeah. you know, feel like that kind of that relationship that you can have, with literally turning kind of your, you know, your insides out, you know, out into the open, um, you know, you need to be comfortable with your weapon. <laughs> so like we, have, we, have we gone all through all, all the paintings? I, I think so. Hold on. Let me, There's let me seven of them. We do this guy. We did that guy. What is that? Oh, So did we get into this guy? This one has a like some neon blue in this one. And it kind of was experimenting again with the lines and kind of the drip and, and making sure that that's kind of even. So how I did that was I did one side kind of dripping this way, the other side to meet in the middle. And then I just kind of set it down on this angle. So some of the heavier paints would kind yeah. of bleed into each other. So like then it kind of almost creates this almost like polygraph um, effect to it. And uh, again, you used a lot of weird, um, you know, uh, almost red, but like, you know, desert sand, actually, uh, like as as the base and the backdrop, um, just experimenting with a lot of those kind of earth tones. And then yep. you layer over that with some of the neon colors. And then, you know, you end up getting kind of Again, with the black. <laughs> and the kind of indigo realm in a lot of it. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Which I think is cool. So. It's like, 
I'm trying to think of like there's I know there's a I, I go to I haven't been to the Museum of Modern Art in a while because there are painters like that that have that and I'm trying to remember who I'm thinking of. I mean, I'm a kind of a big Dolly and Magritte fan. I'm a big surrealist. Oh, yeah. I love that yeah. stuff. Oh, um, yeah. The, the surreal stuff is, is amazing. I, I, lo I love going to um, any type of uh, local like pop up like little uh, art displays that 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 happens a lot. Um, like over the summer, they'll like, we'll be in some random, we'll be in <laughs> some random, you know, place in Michigan or something and you'll yeah. see it advertised and somebody will be renting out like just a space or a house. And there's all these like local, um, artists that get to display some of their works. And it's just, it's fun. It's fun to immerse yourself and just like you, you almost, you get to look at life in a little bit of a different way. Um, you know, and just see, see it through their eyes, through their art. Um, there's a, there's a, a friend of mine, um, out of, uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, her name is Eileen Dorsey okay. and, uh, she's an amazing painter. Um, her thing is, uh, is she works with acrylics as well, but she does a lot of the nature and it's, uh, it's, uh, a lot of wooded areas and like, like if you're standing right in the middle of it and some, and, uh, and she ended up, uh, she does a lot of murals and all of those things. And, uh, and her art is is amazing, and she's been doing it for years. And actually, um, got the opportunity to do a couple different things for some some artists. So she's she's coming up in the scene. Um, one of my favorites. I've been I've been nerding out with her. I'm just like, hey, I finally started doing it. She's like, awesome. If you need any advice, like I'll, <laughs> I'm here. So, you know, call well, I heard, arms. I heard, the what? It's like a call to arms. Like it's like, okay, what arty friends do I have that I can pick their brain on? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know that and Marguerite had said to me, like, acrylic is more forgiving than oil paints. So, like, oil, yeah. you have to put a lot more effort. It's, it's kind of funny. You always hear about people, like, restoring old oil paintings by, you know, their by master painters. They find little things underneath because it's like, you know, they, yeah. they, they cover it over. Whereas with acrylic, I guess you can more, I don't know. What, what is the difference between, for you, between acrylic, acrylic and oil painting? For, for me, it's, it's, a, it's more of a freedom situation because I can get, uh, like it's almost like the more of a mess that you make, the more layers that you can uncover. And right. what I like about the acrylic paints is that um, they they will bleed into themselves when you want to, but when you're working with like layering, um, you can decide kind of later how much you want from the underneath to 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 come up to the surface. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it's just it's kind of fun. It, it for me. Again, maybe it's my inner child, uh, <laughs> but uh, but for me, it's like it's almost like how it ends up revealing itself is is the most uh, is the is the most fun for me in the most joyous way. And 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 for me, I really I cake it on because when you're doing even just like the basis of it, um, you're able to work with. Okay, well now I want to take the edge of my blade, kind of dip it in either the white or the black, and just kind of do random, I'll do random geometric shapes or random lines because then yeah. that'll add one more layer of texture before I start getting into the top layer. Um, just to create that depth, you know, and I feel like uh, what you said is is very true. With the acrylics, it's 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 a little forgiving as to, you know, how how much how much or effort or how little you want to do. Um, there's a, it's just a broad spectrum. So really there's, there's a, you know, there's no rules to it. And, uh, and that's the beauty of it. So, uh, yeah, I've just become very comfortable with, with doing that. Um, and it, you know, it's kind of like if I can relate it to when you have a favorite instrument, like if you, if you find an amazing guitar that yeah. when you sit down and play it, it feels like it's an extension of you and it feels like home and it almost plays itself regardless, you know, of the effort that you're putting into it. So, um, I, I relate it kind of to that, you know, like that's what makes me comfortable and gets me excited. And, uh, and so, you know, for right now, I'm, I'm going to go deep in the rabbit hole <laughs> and, and I do like working within some limitations too. Whereas if you say, okay, I'm going to use cam, you know, I'm going to use can canvas. I'm going to use these two types of acrylic paints and I'm going to use my blades and yeah. I'm going to use my hands. And that's, and that's it. Um, I, I feel like now I'm only starting to realize how much I utilize that in my life as well. Whereas even, 
you know, my setup on stage, it's like I'm using Marshall JCM 800s. Um, I'm using Gibson guitars and yeah. I have a few pedals and then that's it. Like the rest of it. And, and for, and for the most part, um, especially now, uh, most of my guitar tone will come from just what's happening with my guitar and that, and the breakup of the amp. I hardly will ever, you know, add a different layer over top unless it, it calls for, for it in the song. Yeah. But it's almost like that the beauty of the simplicity and the le and the limitations, you almost are a little bit more creative in it because it's coming from you and you don't get that, um, that, almost over stimulation, you know, that comes with so much variety. You know, it's, it's like, it's like when you go to a burger shop and it's like, okay, we got five things on the menu. That's awesome. <laughs> Don't go to cheesecake factory where it's like a 70 page book. Like you're, ne you're never going to decide what to do. It's just chaos. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> a couple analogies for you. <laughs> well, when I go out to eat, it's funny. Like I'll, my girlfriend and I will go out to eat to different places, but we'll, if something somebody does something really well, then I often just get that same thing there because I know that restaurant does this dish really well. This restaurant does this thing really well. I mean, I venture out. We try different types of cuisines. So we go out, but yeah, of course. And my dad grew up in a small town in Illinois, so like he, I sort of inherited his his, his Midwestern palate. You know the the kind of like I like you know the burgers and fries thing and certain basic necessities. Um, but then again, I, I ventured out in the Thai and other places, but it's. Yeah, you have to have, you need to have a variety of influence, I think, to keep things interesting. And I've, you know, in my career, I've done everything for, yeah. I cover music, movies, TV, books, comic books. And so it is sort of information overload, but I like to be able to make those connections. And again, that's why yeah. I like this podcast and to kind of connect you guys to other things. Like the fishing thing, I mean, I, you know, fishing is something I just never, well, I don't like getting up early in the morning, so that doesn't work. So I go to bed about four. Uh, and then, <laughs> but what, uh, for you, what is, what's the joy is actually catch is it is actually having eventually catching the fish and having a meal or is it just the actual act of fishing itself um i i've i've done all of the things like we actually ended up uh th this is uh was a couple years ago got really lucky with with uh with all of our catches and were able to you know fillet and actually have a fish fry and yeah. that and that was rewarding in itself because it's like yeah lake to table i'm i'm providing for the family you know <laughs> it's like it was it was like like yeah i i catch it and i eat it you know very primal um but for the most part and it depends on on you know sometimes the fish really like me sometimes they really don't um but really it's it's about the chase of it i think you know and and it's about the 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 casting and the reeling in and um i do a lot of shaky head and like and uh, looking for bass kind of like on the on the bottom and um or a catfish and and all of that um and but it's it's kind of in that same way of you know where you can kind of turn your brain off and there's only you know this is this is again and with the limitations like this is what you're doing right now and you're you know you're not thinking about anything else but like okay we cast we reel in Okay, you know, did did you get them? Did you hook the, you know, <laughs> um, was that a fish? Oh, that's a log, you know, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. So um, it's, you know, it's another way to turn your brain off. And I think that's important. And I could say the same thing about cooking and, and all that. I, I It's important for people like us who are, who are, you know, banking on, on the arts to keep things moving. Um, you can kind of get, you can get burnt out in one if you're if you have all of your eggs in one basket. You know, you can kind of be like, all right, all right, I've been plugging away at this for a long time. I need a sidestep. I need something to take me away from this so that I can come back to it with fresh eyes, fresh ears. So it's it's all I, I used to I used to feel um uh guilty about it, you know, whereas I would spend, you know, oh my god, I, I just spent four hours painting when I could be practicing guitar, you know, or I could be doing something else that would be forward movement for the band. And then I realized that you, you shouldn't be feeling guilty for doing those things because it, it is all like what you said, it's, it's all connected and they all help each other. Um, you know, the great thing about having these small obsessions that you can kind of, you know, you pass the ball, you know, it's like, okay, now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing that is that it keeps everything creative and you're still working that creative muscle, but you're not getting tired of the one thing and you're not over, you know, overdoing uh, yeah. yourself in, in any one way. And so you don't get sick of it and you don't get tired of these things. So, and uh, so it's, I, it's become, 
it's something that I had to learn is, is a, is a good tool and have to kind of convince myself that like, no, they all work together. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you think, do you think that maybe we'll see one of you, obviously you have the Explorer bird, which is right. This is almost as red as your gamer. We have almost matching gamer chairs. Yours is a little darker or brighter. Actually, it's more vibrant. Um, do you think you could see like a, uh, like a Lizzie Hale, you know, painted guitar? Like one of your designs oh, yeah. streaking across. It'd be uh, kind of interesting, really cool. actually. I, you know, I have a couple. Um, I have a couple like guitars that I probably would be brave enough to do that with, and I could, I could screw them up a little <laughs> bit. Um, I might do that. That'd be interesting. I might have to strip it down a little bit, but uh, but that would be an interesting project, um, just to do something like this, and just with the, uh, and I'd have to end up putting a lacquer on top of it. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. So I, so yeah, so you have all of these uh, different kind of personalities. You have like the black and the red with the explorer bird, and that's like you know fiery, and then you have my my OG explorer, which is you know very you know classy but still rock and roll. You know alpine white with the gold and. And then you have the dark side of the personality, which is the black and the gold. And then you're going to have something that's just like, oh, this is all the color. <laughs> Your psychedelic guitar. Um, yes, this is where the psychedelic, can, yeah, cool. <laughs> hippie guitar. <laughs> awesome. That was a lot of good stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Seriously, that's that's uh, that's exciting. Like I said, like like yeah, let's just dive in. I've. Uh, you know, never really had a conversation with somebody about it before. So 